a tough few days, hasn't it? So much has been happening. <sighs> Hyman didn't think the meetings would go on for so long, but everyone seemed pretty fired up, huh? Hyman thought they'd be at least a little frightened. Well, Fremenay was, now that Paimon thinks about it, but everyone else just looked a little surprised. Uh, well, it's hard to say. Paimon doesn't have any experience with this sort of thing. But with you around, Paimon sure will do great. After all, you're the most reliable person in the world, aren't you? <laughs> uh, huh? Uh, did you just pour some tea? Paimon didn't notice you doing that at all. Uh, then what's that? Paimon's never seen that cup before. Don't be frightened. I'm just joining you two for tea. I merely refrained from saying anything till now. What the hell? <laughs> Aw, have you forgotten me already? Wait, you are familiar. You're the voice we heard from the sky in Sumeru. <laughs> the voice from the sky, hmm? I fear that description is wrong. Though, not completely wrong. Huh. You're feeling lost now, just as you were feeling previously. I sensed that confusion and thus came to you. Guiding people is an irresistible hobby of mine, after all. Hmm, consider me a passerby. Just accepting a commission from my friend's disciple on a whim. The prophecy. Yes, what has been prophesized will be fulfilled. You may view such things as the history of the future. What? The, then is there any way we can stop? I believe you have witnessed a failed attempt with your own eyes. Can everything in Tevat so easily be changed? Ah, so you've caught on. Just as prophecies are usually only the future as seen from the perspectives of the gods, could things be happening in hidden corners where the gods' gaze does not fall? Are the things that you shall see different from the fate that the gods perceive? What is she talking about? It all sounds really impressive and important and stuff, but... It also sounds kind of scary. I believe that you understand, right? Some things are insignificant, but others you must reach out to change. Ultimately, fate shall serve as your only guide, no matter what will happen in Tevat's future. All you need to do is to play your part. Hmm, this was good tea, by the way. Thank you for your hospitality. Well, that'll be all for today. The voice... it's gone! I'm talking. Ah, all right, all right, coming. Hey, it's you who's getting lazy, okay? Well, I see I've walked in on some lively banter. Mona! Fine, just fine. I went to take part in that Steambird panel. It turned out to be more interesting than I expected. Not all Fontanians are pessimistic about this. One journalist mentioned that sitting around and waiting for the end to come would be wrong, and that they should make their own rescue preparations. I agreed, so we had a brief chat with her. Uh, did she have pink hair by any chance? Why, yes! It was Charlotte! You remember her, right? That daredevil journalist? I'm in full support of her view. Prophecies are very important, but how can people allow their lives to be commandeered by just a few words? That's right! Paimon's glad to hear something sensible for once. Ah, yes. About what we had discussed before. I did try, but I'm afraid I couldn't reach the old hag. I'll try again tonight, but I wouldn't get your hopes up. Huh? Goodness gracious. Are you serious? She said that even the god's gaze has blind spots. 
pretty bold if you ask Paimon. Most people would believe the gods to be all-knowing, right? The Hexen Circle members are certainly anything but ordinary. As for the mage named N, the old hag has mentioned her a few times. She said that N's sense of direction is incredible, and that she loves guiding those who are lost. But I've never met her, and if she were still alive, she'd be... <laughs> well, suffice it to say that the hag's at least a few hundred now, and N's been around for longer than that. Whoa, the Hexen Zirkle sounds like a scary group. But they must really stay in shape to live so long. Their abilities alone are pretty terrifying. If she came to see you personally, then the problem you're facing must truly be of great importance. Well, it's not like Paimon could understand anything she said. Yes, she was quite cryptic, but I suspect she means that there is still a way to turn things around. She didn't say when or what that would be, though, so... Perhaps it is something that you cannot know right now. Traveler? Paimon? Are you two alright? Oh, we're fine. We're just a little down right now. It kind of feels like the end is coming, you know? I see. I feel that same sense of desperation, too. I guess you could consider me someone who has often witnessed fate. So far as I have seen, it cannot be swayed. But even so, I still hope for, and believe in, miracles. Astrology is eternal and rational, but fate may not be. It is cruel, but it can also be beautiful. Perhaps that's what N was trying to tell you. Not to lose heart, and to believe that what you are seeing playing out before you is not yet set in stone. I did originally think of steering clear of all this, but I couldn't. Even if this is all futile, I still wish to help everyone. If we don't struggle to the last, then how can we face the end when it comes? Huh. You do have a point. <laughs> there I go, talking about astrological principles again. <laughs> Sorry about that. The moment I start talking about work-related stuff... I oh, I need to get going. It was worth trying to comfort you, even if only a little. I believe that you'll help those who are struggling in the same way I did. I suppose that might be why we always seem to meet by coincidence. Paimon feels kind of moved by what Mona said. But also kind of sad, too. Hey, Traveler. Paimon suddenly feels like going outside for a walk. Let's go. Let's walk around the city, shall we? There's a few spots we always like to walk by. Interesting. Newspaper. Uh, what's going on? Let Paimon see! The underwater stronghold, the Fortress of Meripede, has continued in its noble autonomy. But that does not mean that others cannot interact with it. My recent attempts to enter the fortress bore little fruit. Huh. Guess Charlotte still hasn't given up on that. Thus, did an Outlander friend become the focus of this report? A blonde adventurer with their white fairy legends trailing in their wake. It is said that this mysterious traveler once visited the underwater fortress. So while the fortress's interior remains a mystery behind closed doors, do not fear, for the tales of the traveler contain surprises in spades. Journalist Charlotte's biggest scoop yet, the Traveler's Trail, World Walker. Huh. Charlotte took so many awesome photos of us and we never even noticed her! She hasn't been able to get a hold of anything at the fortress, so since we're easier to find, she's using us as the subject matter instead? Ugh, seriously? Well, fine. Those headlines and photos do look cool, so Paimon will forgive her this time. We're here! <sighs> Paimon's hungry. 
Should we go in and get something to eat? situation we were in. Let's give it another go, but I'm sure it'll be great. One slice of cake, please. Ah, someone showed up after all. Oh, wait, you're the one from the Palais Marmonia. Oh, are you here to buy cake too? <laughs> it seems Monsieur Nervalette was right. You really can eat. Wait, did he really say something like that? That's right. Even he has his own preferences when it comes to food. As for me, I love the cake and coffee here. Do you come here often? Mm -hmm. Usually every day. Every day? It's part of my daily schedule, apart from work. I shall have my cake and coffee. Uh. Then what if someone told you one day that this place would be closing soon, and you wouldn't get to eat cake here anymore? What would you think? But why would it close? Well, Paimon doesn't know either, but... Maybe... Maybe the waters will rise tomorrow. You know, like in the prophecy. Oh, the prophecy. Um, <clears throat> to be honest, I haven't paid much attention to that. No, uh, still, even if there'd be no more cake tomorrow, that wouldn't keep me from having some today. No, no, it's the same for eating in general. You might not be able to eat tomorrow, but if you can do so today, then you should carry on. That's what people call living, you know. Huh. Don't be sad. Excuse me, could I have two more slices of cake to go? These two slices are for you. Sijuin said that this kind of expression you're making is what humans call being sad. Oh, you know Sijuin? I sure do. Mm -hmm. She was born before me, and she sometimes comes to the surface to teach us things about humans. She said that humans are creatures that are saddened easily. Yes, and you can only lift their spirits by feeding them delicious food. So please try the cakes here. I've got something else to do, so I'll be going now. You two try to stay in a good mood after eating, all right? <laughs> Bye. And there she goes. All right, let's dig in. I'm unsure this cake will be delicious. It's more delicious than last time! And the flavor gets even better with the sip of tea! It sure would be nice if we could come again tomorrow! Sure would be nice if we could always eat delicious food here. Let's go look for Charlotte and have a chat. <laughs> wow! If it isn't the Traveler and Paimon! Oh, have you seen the article I wrote about you? Ha! You've got some nerve! You just used us to make some quick mora! Oh, you needn't worry about that. I heard that you were in Poisson some time back, so I sent you a letter to discuss just that. It appears you didn't receive it, though. It's all right, though. I've set aside the amount intended for you. I've even set the table with some food. Really? Oh, you're the best! <laughs> you're almost a little too easy to win over, Paimon. If I were a journalist with ulterior motives, you'd be in trouble now, you know. Oh, Paimon knows you're not like that. Still, what brings you here all of a sudden? Were you looking for me? When Mona mentioned you, we thought of coming to see you at work. <laughs> I see. It seems you've already bumped into Mona here in Fontaine. So she mentioned me? What did she say? She said that you're a real daredevil of a journalist. <laughs> nice. In which case, can this daredevil journalist dare to request an exclusive interview with the legendary traveler and Paimon? Huh? 
So your article in the paper today doesn't count? Oh, of course it doesn't. That was more like live photography. What I'd like to do is dive deeper and ask you to talk about the things you've seen and experienced. Yeah, are we even qualified enough? Why not? If I say you're worth an interview, then you're worth it. But not right now, of course. I'll need a few days to prepare. Oh, in that case, we'll just chat when you have the time then? Oh, so that's a yes? Ooh, splendid! I'll tell the editor-in-chief immediately. I'll have to apply for lighting, a venue, some props, and... Oh, so much to get done now. Talk to you later. Wait, Charlotte, Paimon's still got a question for you. Hmm? And what's that? If, just for example, Fontaine were to be flooded tomorrow, what would you do today? Huh, that's the prophecy you're talking about, isn't it? I mean, I do hear about it often, but I've never once thought that the day could be tomorrow. If you're seriously asking, then I might try and think of a way to leave Fontaine. Oh, but I'm still a journalist, first and foremost. That means I have a duty to be reporting from the scene. And secondly, I wouldn't forsake my homeland that easily. From what I've seen, most people don't know what they do should the worst come to pass. In truth, it might be better just to behave like normal rather than worry over such an end. So in all likelihood, I'd probably still be prepping at the office for that interview of ours. I know what you're thinking. That sounds a bit sad, but I've always believed that it's best to do what you enjoy. Just think about it. If this nation really were to be suddenly destroyed tomorrow, but I still successfully finish an exclusive interview with a truly unique person, then the story I would wind up writing would truly be timeless. And then do you know what I'd do? Well, I'd write that story, send it for printing, and use messenger pigeons to get copies out to the various nations as soon as possible. I'm not a dreamer, nor am I a workaholic, but I do love my job, and I'd be proud of leaving such an article behind. I guess you could say that I was born to be a journalist, but anyway, that's my answer. And on that note, I'll get back to my preparations. That's so nice. All of a sudden, Paimon actually kinda envies her. Anyway, let's go and take a look at the sea, shall we? The sea breeze and scenery can be a pretty soothing combo, huh? Hmm. Paimon's been thinking. If it wasn't Fontaine, but all of Tevat that would be destroyed tomorrow, where would we go and what would we do? No, Paimon should ask, if you could choose, what would you like to do? We've always been moving to the next destination, so we haven't spent much time thinking about these kinds of things. We didn't have to either, with us always being on the road and whatnot. You mean... Still traveling? Huh. Wait, isn't that what we've always been doing? Like it'll grow mold if you stay here long enough. But it's still better than the Fortress of Meripede, that's for sure. It's not only damp there, but salty too. Oh, so the two of you are still here. Wonderful. Oh, you're from the Palais Mermonia, aren't you? Yes, I'm Isadora. Monsieur Nervilac sent me to look for you two before. I heard that afterward you went to the Fortress of Meripede. <laughs> Not at all. I'm well aware that you're friends of his. Actually, I'm here to pass along a message from him. Yes, inside the Opera House. The Mari Chaussée Phantom has declared the incident a small-scale riot. A riot? Well, that said, I don't personally think it was that serious. Lady Farina was watching a performance at the Opera House, and while she was resting during an intermission, some other audience members suddenly started harassing her. 
loudly accusing her of doing nothing about the prophecy crisis. And before she could respond, others started to join in. The crowd continued to grow, and protests against the Hydro Archon started to break out. So people have started to put the blame on Farina. Guess they finally found an outlet for the pressure they've been under due to the prophecy. I agree. People will naturally rely on gods, as is customary. But the moment people feel threatened, gods are also the first to be blamed. So what happened after that is for- Seeing that the situation was spiraling out of control and that further argument was pointless, she claimed that she'd gotten tired of this and left in a hurry. The Marichose Phantom had their hands full maintaining order and did not catch where Lady Farina had gone. Only when things had stabilized did we realize that she had gone missing. So, you mean she's still missing? That's right. The Marichose has dispatched many people to search for her. But we don't have any leads yet. That said, I don't think there's much to worry about. She is a god, after all. Even if she were to fall into the hands of rioters, what could ordinary people do to her? Good. Monsieur Nervilet sent me to tell you about the situation, but he didn't say anything else. Don't worry. This is more than enough to go on. Thanks for keeping us informed. Ah, oh, is that so? Well, all right then. In that case, you two take care. Well, sounds like we should hurry over to Poitsal, then. If we know Farina, she won't try to fix things in this situation. Instead, she'll look for a place to wait out the heat. And, as we also know, she may be loud and dramatic, but she doesn't have a heart of stone. When Nervale was talking to her in the Palais Mermonia, and she heard about Poisson, she couldn't hide her sadness and remorse. It would be hard for her to ignore being accused by the public today. Paimon thinks Farina's probably taken the opportunity to slip away to Poisson and try to relieve the sense of guilt that she's feeling. Huh. Well, what do you think? Paimon knows the answer, of course, but Paimon can do the analysis to back it up, too. Cool, huh? In that case, there's not a moment to lose. Poisson, here we come! <laughs> This place looks deserted. Guess all the survivors must have evacuated already. All that's left here are signs of devastation. Could Farina really be here? Let's try to find her as soon as possible. Look! That's Farina, right over there! She really is here all on her own. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Should I just give up? This is all meaningless. What was meant to happen did happen after all. Everyone's dead. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <sighs> give up, Farina. There's no point in holding out. I'm sorry, but what can I even do other than to repeat meaningless apologies over and over? <laughs> Who, who's that? Don't worry, Farina, it's just us. <laughs> so, it is you, blonde traveler from another land. Why, I almost thought you were summoned from that mob of my ignorant subjects. Come to kneel and beg for my forgiveness. Farina, you were crying just now, weren't you? The tear stains on your face are obvious. Uh, what do you mean, tear stains? Uh, oh, <laughs> I remember. The show at the Opera House earlier this morning was so moving. I'm still trying to process it. <laughs> Who did that uncivilized rabble think they were? Disturbing my enjoyment of the arts! They even dare to tout their Archon! I must teach them a lesson. <laughs> I can just imagine their twisted and frustrated faces once they realize that I'm nowhere to be found! 
Oh, and I'm sure Nouvellet and those people from the Marish Dose Phantom are freaking out right next to them, too. <laughs> I... Uh, of course not. Hey, there she is. The Hydro Archon's over there. Quick, after her. against the rules. I can't let them get their way. Farina uh, just ran off! Quick, we have to catch up with her! Lead the way. Exhausted. <sighs> I'm so tired. <sighs> I totally thought they had caught me. Uh, no, I mean, I nearly gave in to the sheer enthusiasm they displayed. <laughs> uh, you're right. Yep, that's a good girl. about that. Nouvellet's made some emergency plans, so the evacuation should go a lot smoother this time. Yeah, I hope you're right. But the people of Poisson, they've already... It's true. I've been investigating the prophecy for hundreds of years. I once had informants all over to Vat, searching for clues and feeding information back to me. I've tried all kinds of ways, too, to hold back the sea. Anything to keep the coastline from advancing. But all my efforts proved to be futile in the end. Really, the truth has been clear to me for a very long time. We cannot make an enemy of the Divine. No matter what we do, the will of the heavenly principles will have its way, and the prophecy shall be fulfilled. <laughs> Give up. <sighs> I do love the sound of that phrase. It would mean finally coming to terms with fate, but also for me to finally be free. Indeed, I've thought about giving up so many times. Especially after we almost lost Poisson. Fate is really unreasonable, isn't it? It has no heart and obeys no rules. The prophecy has only just started to come true, and so many people have already lost their lives. But just now, it all became clear to me. I still don't have the right to come to terms with fate on behalf of everyone else. As long as the final moment hasn't come, it's still not too late. Don't worry. I... I will keep hope alive for everyone until the very end. <sighs> well, 
that's enough for now. I got the impulse to play the stricken maiden, but honestly, considering my rank and station, that wasn't a good fit at all. <laughs> Don't take any of what I just said seriously. How could I possibly let Fontaine fall to the whims of trivial prophecy? Come on! Paimon could have sworn you were actually being honest just now. Share my burden. <sighs> That's impossible. It was fated right from the start that this would be my duty alone. A witness. <sighs> yes, I've heard that you came to Tevat from beyond the stars, yes. In other words, you never belonged here. And if Tevat is, in its entirety, a show on a stage, then you're just a spectator, aren't you? <sighs> if that's the case... <sighs> I... Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes my opening performance. Now, without further ado, we may proceed to the trial of our god. Ah, so this is what it is. Yes, you deserve praise for the effort you took to raise the dramatic stakes. Do not forget, however, that I am Fosalor, the god of justice, the embodiment of justice itself. Does it not strike you as even the least bit absurd to bring the very concept of justice to trial? May I interpret these words as your refusal to stand trial? In that case, you will have the opportunity to defend your honor through a duel. You... you would draw your blade against a god? <clears throat> I see. It seems like you have made up your mind. Paimon can't believe it. She... she just surrendered! Hmm... What the heck is going on? Did I just see an Archon surrender to a... a human? Wow, how utterly humiliating. Lady Farina! What is the meaning of this? Uh, shh. It would seem that there has been a misunderstanding. To be clear, the raising of both hands is not always an indication of surrender. Looking for excuses again, huh? I raised my hands just now to indicate my acceptance of the trial. No duel shall be necessary. I will admit that I've been running away for a long time. I'm sorry, everyone. I was unable to protect the people of Poisson. It is my duty to stand trial for my crimes. You are not the only ones to be disappointed in me. I, too, am exceedingly disappointed in myself. <sighs> but now, it is time for the Hydro Archon to show you her courage and resolve. I, Farina, We'll use this trial to show the world the true meaning of justice! This time, I will protect you. Applaud and rejoice! One of the most outrageous and fantastical arcs known to the opera Epicles is now unfolding before your eyes. Mark my words. 
This shall be one of the most exhilarating and brilliant shows ever to grace the stage of Fontaine! The trial of the Hydro Archon, Fossilor, will now begin! Woohoo! Oh, now we're making history! <sighs> Why does it feel like Farina just took over the whole thing? Like, come on! Didn't she just get forced to stand trial for her crimes? Also, even though she's still acting super dramatic, she is taking this seriously this time, right? All right, then. Who will be my opponent in this trial? The court asks the prosecutor to please take the stand. Is that so? Very well. Then please speak, witness of Tivat, my accuser and fated opponent. Also, please allow me to ask, as a final question before the trial begins, just how much work did you do to force me onto this stage? Well, we did do a lot of prep after the meeting that day. I can go over the tasks assigned to the Spina di Rosula, since they were rather straightforward and easy. Navia, the president of the Spina di Rosula. Most of the people who participated in the disturbance this morning were my subordinates. They changed into plain clothes and came to the Opera House as regular audience members, waiting for the perfect opportunity to incite insurrection against you. The people's resentment against their Archon has been building as more and more of the prophecy is fulfilled. A spark was all we needed to turn smoldering anger into a flame. Moreover, according to our understanding and analysis of you, when something like that occurred, you would likely flee the scene and head to Poisson by yourself. So, we arrange for a second group to lie in wait there. So, you mean... The ones who scoured the settlement for me were also from the Spina? And their goal was to force you to step into the giant magic box so you may personally participate in the greatest magic performance in all of Fontanian history. That's right. That house was a magic box rather than someone's residence. As the super ultimate version of the setup that I used when I first performed at the Opera Epicles, the volume of the box was increased by a whole order of magnitude, and the distance it traversed was the entire gap between Poisson and Arrhenius. Its cargo, of course, was an Archon instead of a human. My thanks, Farina. Without your help, we could never have pulled off such an extraordinary performance. Uh... You're welcome. Of course, this performance was only made possible with Father's support. The House of the Hearth spent a massive amount of labor in Mora to pull this off. We had to select a location, construct a giant magic box, dig a tunnel, and open up a path through the water. It was a lot of work for all of us. So, in other words... The earthquake that we felt within the giant magic box was just a normal tremor from the transportation of the whole house? That's right. It wasn't a sign of another disaster to come. <laughs> then, I can guess Nervilette and Cloran's parts. You gathered a crowd, prepared a stage, and made sure that the champion duelist would be immediately ready for a fight. Also that as soon as I appeared on the stage, the trial may commence without a hitch. Am I right? Yes, that is correct. Well, Clorand, I must commend you for your courage. Only the most outstanding champion duelist in all of Fontaine would accept a duel with an Archon without flinching. Thank you. As for you, Traveler, I suppose your role was to keep me distracted with conversation once you found me in Poisson. You'd make sure that I didn't notice anything amiss before revealing yourself as my prosecutor once we'd arrived onto the stage. Oh?
<laughs> Is that so? Then I suppose I must have missed my final chance. <sighs> it's fine. It matters not. What's done is done. The stage is already set, so there's no reason to disappoint the audience. Let's see this trial through to the very end. <laughs>